Probably because I think I was the first one to actually make a clone in animal, or at least higher animal cells. Um, the frog is very good for, excuse me, for experimental embryology, and it was used for um, a very long time by the people who first did experiments with embryos and eggs, mostly German, but they were doing experiments with the frog because it has large eggs and they are easy to work with. For example, the mouse or human eggs are extremely small by comparison and much more difficult to work with. The hope is that it will be possible eventually to take cells of a human that are easily available, like skin cells, and convert them into other kinds of cells for which the patient has malfunction or non-function. So, for example, it should be possible to take a very small piece of skin like one millimetre in size and grow from that <coughs> the kind of cells that someone might need to improve their vision or their heart or even eventually the brain. Yes, if, if you can uh, derive new cells from a piece of skin that would be better for the people who have strong ethical problems. It would be better if you can do this for humans using a piece of skin because then you would not be considered to be killing a potential embryo. But that is very much a, an issue which is uh, under discussion, uh, particularly in the Roman Catholic Church. I will say in my talk that I think the prospect of improving vision is very good. There is uh, almost ready now to give treatment for certain kinds of failing vision using this kind of technology and so I assume that in 15 years it will be quite routine uh, as one example. It's more difficult to try to see how uh, this procedure will improve neurodegenerative diseases like Parkinson's because that involves uh, a very large number of cells and so far that does not seem to work so well. The obvious person to um, mention to you is the famous person from Japan called Yamanaka who developed the way of using uh, non-embryo human cells for this purpose. That was a great discovery. Um, going back a while, but he made the major advance. He and his colleague Takahashi made the major advance. And that makes it possible to do these kinds of experiments without having to kill an embryo. So that is very attractive to the Roman Catholic Church. Well, one's very grateful for the people who must have voted for that, so obviously one is extremely grateful, but you don't know really who to thank because you're, you, you get a, a conclusion and one can only thank them in a general way for the, uh, the support or uh, the view that they have taken on this matter.
When I started, there were substantial problems. Um, they were almost all technical problems, and one had to work away in the belief that eventually the results would be important to try to solve those technical difficulties. And um, there were several of these. I can give you one example, if you would like. Um, one technical problem is that the people who first did these, did experiments with frog eggs, used the frog that was common in Europe and North America, and you could penetrate the egg harmlessly with a very fine glass needle. I, for various reasons, I was working with a South African frog, and that turns out to be <coughs> completely covered with an extremely elastic jelly, and you cannot get a needle into it, absolutely impossible. So that was enough to stop the experiments almost completely, but partly by luck, um, there was a solution to that. That then made it possible to do these experiments with the South African frog, which in all other respects was much better and gave the best results. So that is one example of where a technical problem really had to be solved almost before you even start. If that had not been, if we had not found a way around that, it might never have been possible to do the experiments. Well, I had always had a great interest <coughs> in biological things, but um, I was told in my school days that I was not at all suited for science, and so I had to be uh, made to study something completely different. In fact, it was ancient Greek and Latin as a subject, but I was fortunately able to after my school was completely finished, to then get back and try to become, uh, to do something in science. That was the good news for me. Um, I suppose the lesson one learns is that if you are really interested in something, it's much better to go on <coughs> trying to achieve what you want in that area because once you have started you will be more effective because you're really so motivated by the work that you want to do that finally when you get going things can go well. So one should not be too discouraged by school teachers who say you are no good at this subject. If you really think it's interesting and you work hard, usually you can get past a, a negative kind of school teacher.